Okay, let's do another retake. This video is just getting way too long and I need to keep it down. So bear with me guys, I'm gonna try my best. And this one, we're gonna talk about the 2018 MacBook Pros. We're gonna talk about the new Blackmagic external graphics card unit, which I'm super excited about, both of those things, and how they relate to video editors. We're gonna look at Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, and a little bit of Premiere Pro. We're gonna look at some really great, exciting news, some uh, kind of uh, iffy, but okay news, and some really unfortunate things that Apple just doesn't mention and Blackmagic doesn't mention. I mean, they just wanna sell you on things. They don't wanna you know, have you know the whole picture before you spend your hard-earned money, but we're gonna talk about that. Before we go into that, I wanna let you guys know about Prime Day. That is today until tomorrow. Last year, I got some amazing deals on Prime Day, uh, better deals than Cyber Monday or Black Friday, so I'm gonna have some links in the video description so you guys can go check it out, see what's gonna work for you and what you've been wanting to buy and see what kind of deals you guys can get. If you guys have been following my channel, you'll know that YouTube screwed me and they won't fix it, so you guys can check it out over there somewhere. So if you guys wanna support my channel, you guys can do so by using the links below, shopping on Amazon, that gives me a little bit of kickback and I would definitely appreciate it. Along with that, we have links to both of these units right here, the MacBook, the external graphics card unit, and another one that I would personally recommend for a lot of you guys instead of this Blackmagic eGPU kit, so you guys can go check that out. All right guys, so let's start off with the 2018 MacBook Pros. First off, they're putting quad-core CPUs in 13-inch MacBook Pros. That is awesome. I've been asking that for a long time and a lot of you guys wanted the form factor of a 13-inch, which I do prefer. One great thing is that they didn't put the cheapest quad-core in that touch bar model. They could have saved some money, but they didn't. It has Iris Plus graphics and it is a 2.3 gigahertz model up to 3.6 or so. And in my first test, that CPU is outperforming my 15 inch, which I had to custom order with the best CPU possible in Geekbench 4. And it's pretty much getting close and matching it in Cinebench, which is shocking because I spent like double the money of this touch bar model on that MacBook. Uh, the bad news is, if you don't like the touch bar, which I am not a fan of, and you wanna go with the base model without the touch bar with two Thunderbolt ports, they didn't touch that model at all. They left the same exact one as 2017, same old processor, nothing has changed. Now they're basically forcing you to buy the $1,800 model if you want good performance. Typical Apple, unfortunate, I wish they didn't do that, but they did it and they wanna rake in that money. Now on the positive side, if you're buying the 15 inch MacBook Pro, they made some great decisions and I'm so happy that one, if you're buying the base model, that graphics card now finally comes with four gigabytes of RAM. It used to come with two gigs. That is just simply not enough. So if you're getting the base graphics, it comes with four gigs of RAM, awesome. Other thing is you get a six core processor even on the base model 15 inch MacBook Pro. I was not expecting this. I figured they would stick with a four core for the base model, make you pay extra for the six core. No, they did not do that. So you get a six core, no matter what, you can get an i7 model if you're getting the base or spend extra money and get an i9 model, which is what I did. I have a 15 inch model coming in with 32 gigs of RAM with the best graphics and that best CPU. And man, the benchmarks that I've seen so far are ridiculous. Finally, we get that 32 gigs. It's been needed for quite a while. Now, it wasn't Apple's fault really in the past. Uh, Intel wasn't supporting the low power RAM up to 32 gigabytes. Apple waited for one refresh. Now they waited for another refresh. Intel hasn't added that support even in these new CPUs. So they said, whatever, we're gonna use standard RAM that takes more power. We're gonna pack in 32 gigabytes of RAM. We're gonna give the people what they want. Thank you, Apple. And on top of that, we're gonna increase the battery capacity by 10% to make up for that extra power draw, which was the reason for not doing that initially when they launched this new model. That is awesome, I'm so excited for that machine and that one is coming in later this week, but I have the 13 inch model here and I have some great news with this external graphics card. Let's switch over to the external graphics card. This is the first external graphics card that supports 5K displays or maybe more officially Thunderbolt 3 displays. I've used that 5K LG display since it launched with the MacBook Pros and I love it. It is so convenient to have one plug, one cable into the MacBook, getting all my data, getting extra ports on the back, getting charge. 
it's awesome. But the external graphics cards units that I've uh, covered in the past, none of them have Thunderbolt 3 output. So I even was planning to sell this monitor, go to a lower quality monitor, just so I can plug in my MacBook and get better graphics performance. Now, thankfully, I don't have to do it, which is great. Now, there are a couple issues that could come up that I will cover in my full video, which is gonna be titled, Is the Blackmagic eGPU worth it? That 5K display takes a ton of power and resources, and I wonder how much is it bottlenecking using a 5K display over a 4K display? I haven't had the time to test it yet, but when I'm gonna do an initial 20 plus hours of testing, that will be in that full video. The other downside is that graphics card unit has a RX 580 graphics card, which is respectable. It's the best graphics card available in the iMac. It's built in, you cannot change it out. The graphics card unit that I've linked in the video description, you can swap it out, you can upgrade it later, and that's gonna help for resale. It's gonna help it last longer, where this thing, you're gonna get two, three years out of it, and you're gonna wanna swap it out, and I don't think the resale value is gonna hold as well. There is a benefit though, is that thing is whisper silent. It actually reminds me of the Cylinder Mac Pro. It's shaped a little bit different, but it has one large fan up top, sucks in air at the bottom, pushes it out the top, and you cannot hear it over standard room noise. It is crazy quiet. Well, where all the other units have power supply fan, the enclosure fan, two fans on the graphics cards, and they typically run quite loud, which is a bummer if you're used to Apple products that run quiet. On this unit, we have a HDMI 2.0 output port and four USBs along with the Thunderbolt ports. One issue is there's no DisplayPort output. So if you're using an older 4K monitor with this unit that doesn't have HDMI 2.0 in, you will not be able to run at 60 hertz, which is unfortunate. There is no DisplayPort, I wish there was. Now I did order um, a Thunderbolt 3 to DisplayPort cable, so we will see if that works and that will be in the full video. So finally, enough talking about these two units here, let's get into some performance numbers. As far as actual video editing, I started off with Final Cut and I tested out the infamous Bruce X rendering test. And this is where things get a little bit weird. With both of the machines, I got the exact same time with that external graphics card unit plugged in. And I moved on to a five minute 4K timeline with two LUTs and film grain applied. I started exporting that and also I am not seeing any difference whatsoever. I also tested H.265 video clips, uh, exporting to HEVC or H.265. This is a one minute timeline with LUTs and film grain applied. And once again, no difference on the MacBook Pro. And I actually got slower results with the 13 inch MacBook Pro. And yes, the eGPU is working. We plugged it in, it's showing up. What is going on? This is where I started digging and researching. So the latest release of Final Cut 10.4, I believe, there was a change made there. Now, Apple hasn't really opened it up if this was on purpose or if this was just a glitch or a bug, but there's been a couple software revisions of Final Cut and this has not been addressed whatsoever. When you are editing inside of the Final Cut in the timeline, it is using that external graphics card. But when you go to actually export your video, it completely stops using the external GPU and it just uses your built-in graphics. So on the 13 inch MacBook Pro, that's just the Intel Iris graphics. On the 15 inch, of course, it's that Radeon graphics card. This is kind of sucky. Now, it's a good thing with Final Cut, it already exports quite fast, a lot faster than most other programs, so it's not like you're waiting that much, but if you want faster exports, you are not gonna get it at least just yet. The last version of Final Cut, 10.3.4, I believe, that did use the external graphics card when you were exporting, and the times were much faster when you were exporting. So if you're still in that version, good, I'm on the new version though. I like all the new features that they added, all the updates. I'm working with ProRes RAW, so I need the new version. So I really hope they fix this in the future. I don't see the point in not using it when you're exporting. Apple, please, please fix this. I really need this. A lot more people need this that are gonna be buying this external graphics card. I don't know why you're not mentioning it on the advertisement of this, that it's not gonna use it while you're exporting. They don't give figures for exporting. They give figures for the Resolve, DaVinci Resolve, but not for Final Cut. And there's a lot of people on forums that are also very, very frustrated. Please fix this. Now, this is where things get a little bit weird. I switched over to testing stabilization. Final Cut is very quick at stabilizing clips. 
Starting off with my 15 inch MacBook Pro, I saw no difference with external graphics card. And yes, it was using an external graphics card unit. Interesting. Is it just not bottlenecking it? Is it the CPU bottleneck? I have a lot more testing to do. We will figure this out. Good news though, with a 13 inch MacBook Pro that is using the eGPU kit, we saw much faster stabilization times, slightly more than twice as fast. So this is when you're in the timeline, you're doing things, you're stabilizing. It is using that external graphics card and the results are much better. The same thing when I'm working in the timeline, I have a five minute project, two lots film grain applied, and it is stuttery without the external graphics card unit because we're using the built-in graphics, that's the limitation. As soon as you plug in that eGPU kit, bam, perfectly smooth footage, uh, no rendering, no pre-rendering, and the results are great because we have that great quad-core CPU in there now, finally, that's not a bottleneck, and we have this nice graphics card unit, awesome, I'm very happy. You guys that want this type of setup, you guys are gonna be good to go. The last test that I ran in Final Cut is ProRes RAW. This is 60p ProRes RAW footage that is slowed down. So I shot at 120 frames per second on the FS5 Mark II, and I slowed that down. And with the Mac, the 13-inch MacBook Pro, it is way too choppy to edit. You can't use it. But as soon as you plug in that external graphics card, bam, perfectly smooth footage. And we're editing Cinema 4K ProRes RAW 60p that's slowed down to 24p on a 13-inch MacBook Pro. That's amazing. Switching over to DaVinci Resolve, I'm in a 4K timeline with two LUTs and film grain applied, and both machines are stuttering at this point. I get about 10 frames per second on that new 13-inch MacBook Pro, and about 22 frames per second on the 15-inch. As soon as we plug in an external graphics card, bam, perfectly smooth, no dropped frames. So I exported the same five-minute timeline with those effects, and weirdly, I got no difference on my MacBook Pro, and I was starting to worry that we're running into the same issue of it not using that graphics card uh, unit when it's exporting. But testing that 13-inch MacBook Pro, our export went from about 22 minutes to just over six minutes, matching our 15-inch MacBook Pro. And lastly, with DaVinci Resolve, I stabilized the 20-second 4K clip, and we went from 35 seconds on the MacBook Pro to just 20 seconds with the external graphics card unit, so we're seeing a really good difference there. But what's even better is on the 13-inch, we went from over two minutes to do that same task to just 19 seconds. Massive, massive, massive difference. So. 13-inch Mac Pro editors, rejoice if you're gonna go with a setup like this. And lastly, let's touch a little bit on Premiere Pro. I didn't get a test Premiere very much because I couldn't get it loaded on that 13-inch yet, but we got some really sucky results and I have a lot more testing to do to figure out what is going on. Premiere in general isn't very efficient, but here with the external graphics card, we actually got slower render times on that five minute 4K timeline with two LUTs and film grain applied, both in OpenCL and with metal. And that really sucks. As you guys can see, the times are already much slower than DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut, but um, as soon as we plug this in, it's even slower. I don't know what's going on. I have a lot more testing to do, like I've mentioned, both in all these video editing programs with different codecs, uh, with the unit itself, like does that 5K slow it down? How much better results will we have with a 4K monitor instead? Can you plug in a DisplayPort 4K monitor? So uh, yeah, I'll have a full video to come on is this Blackmagic external graphics card unit worth it for a video editor? So if you guys are interested in that, hit that subscribe button and make sure you guys enable those notifications because YouTube is not showing all the videos to the people that subscribe to your channel. You guys do not wanna miss out on that. On top of that, I'm gonna be doing a lot of comparisons like a 15 inch MacBook Pro 2018 versus a iMac. How is the performance different? Can you get better performance than iMac now that we've had six core processors in this external graphics card unit? I think so, but we'll just have to wait and see. So much of it just comes from efficiency and how the program makes use of the graphics card, CPU bottleneck. There's just so much variables and so much to test. So make sure you guys are not gonna miss out on the future video. If you guys wanna see how YouTube screwed me and they won't fix it, you guys can do so by clicking this little video icon over here. And don't forget to go check out Amazon Prime Day deals that help support the channel, helps me to be able to spend money and spend all this time making these kind of videos um, like I do. If you guys have any questions, anything you want me to test, I can't guarantee it, but I could definitely try. Ask in that comment section below. This is Evan Max, and I will see you in the next video.